Good day, everyone. So good to be back with you for another West Coast Shaving Daily Shave Review. Today's review is not going to be of a soap or splash or a razor, but rather a brush from a brush collection. Now, this brush collection is very unique. I'm excited to present it to you, and I'll explain why in just a second. Let me go ahead and pull it out of my soaking mug here. Now, obviously, I haven't pre-lathered it because I want you to see it in all of its beauty and splendor and originality, but this is the Heritage Collection. I don't know if I'm holding that up right. Yes, yes, I am. And this is the specific Clenzo model. Now, if you go to West Coast Shaving's channel, you'll see other reviews of this model and other brushes from other shavers given other perspectives. It's good for you to go and look at those. This is just gonna be my perspective. But this is a brush collection that I'm pretty excited about. And I always think in the community that, you know, as far as creativity and ingenuity and cleverness and new original ideas, I feel like we've kind of almost reached the pinnacle of that. How much more can we do? It's just shaving. And every now and then someone comes up with an original idea. Now this is an original idea. So the proprietor of the Heritage Collection is a gentleman named Neil Breed. You can find him on Instagram, you can find him on West Coast or on uh, Facebook, but I would contend that he's more active on Instagram if you wanna take a look and communicate with him. So what Neil decided to do, Neil is a vintage brush restorer. That was something I think he did on the side in addition to his regular job. You'll find a lot of folks in the community that do do that. There's not a ton, but there are some. And what they typically do, so if you're an intermediate or advanced member of the wet shaving community or of the hobby, you know exactly what brush restoration is. If you're brand new, you may not know, so I'll explain it very quickly and very briefly. What it basically means is you'll find individuals that will source old vintage style brushes from the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and so on. If they can find those models from online sources, from other members of the community, from someone around the world, they will source those brushes based on orders that they receive They'll clean them, sand them, polish them, restore them, put contemporary knots into them and sell them to individuals so that they can partake of that nostalgic era, partake of those traditional styles and use them in contemporary times. Pretty cool, pretty neat. Now me personally, so here's just me. If you know me in the community outside of the West Coast Shaving Channel, for those of you that do know, um, I'm very OCD. I don't like the idea of using used items. I never know who's had them, especially if they're from years back. You never know who had them, what's on them, especially with razors. A lot of guys do this. Now, again, I don't want someone to do a write-up somewhere that says I'm crazy. It's just something I don't particularly care for. Guys buy used items all the time without issue. It happens every day in the shave community. There's no problem with it. I personally, it's my own preference. I don't care for it. So when Neil came out with this, what he's done is he's taken those models and reimagined them and recreated them, put a little bit of a contemporary spin on them and basically made specifications for them so that they would suit today's wet shaver. And what that really means is, and this is how he put it to me. He said, basically, he sent me the write-up that he did. I think it's from his site. And what it basically says is that the issue he ran into is finding a lot of the models that people were requesting was becoming more difficult. So that was one thing. The second thing was a lot of the more contemporary knots, especially badger and boar, they're becoming a lot more dense. There's a lot more hairs in them. They're becoming a lot thicker around the base. So it's more difficult to get those knots into some of those older style handles. And so he decided to reinvent them and reimagine them, like I said, so that he can get a lot of those contemporary knots in there. So the, this knot is the West Coast Shaving three band knot. This is not one of Neil's knots. This is a very dense knot. Not the densest out there, but it's a great performer. I enjoy it. I have it in one other brush and I think it works really well in this specific handle. So I'm gonna to get to using that in a second. Again, this is the Clenzo model. I really like the colors on this. I like this style of handle and there's varying different uh, models of brushes that are available uh, on West Coast Shaving Site. So what's really neat is Neil kind of did this, opened his own store, but he also sells brushes through West Coast Shaving and you can also get West Coast Shavings knots in his brushes through their site. So I think that's pretty cool. I like the idea, I think it's clever. It gives us um, something else to delve into. It gives us access to that nostalgic traditional style with a more contemporary spin on it. It just works, I'm excited about it. Plus the brushes are new and not used and I appreciate that. So that's what I'm gonna share with you today. That's what I'm gonna shave with today. Now it's been soaking. I obviously didn't preload because I want you to see this brush in all of its splendor and beauty. I'm gonna add a little bit more water to it. Now the soap I'm going with today is going to be the Wickham Soaps 1912 formula, the Parma Violet, this is a great scent. There's so many great soap bases out there. 
Um, Wickham's done some cool things in the last year or so. They haven't been as active as I would like them to be, but this is a soap out of England. It's a great soap base if you've ever gotten the chance to use it. And it's purple, so it goes with the brush. You know me, OCD, I like to match stuff. So Badger, I've gotten to know it quite well over the last several years. The last two years, I've gotten better with using it. So I'm excited about that. So the, again, this is the three band. This is a 26 millimeter knot in this handle. So I'm gonna go ahead and load this up. Now with Badger, I've learned it's, it's better to have a drier knot going in and to get that creaminess into the actual hairs itself and then start to build the lather as you go along. And in the past, I used to try to load a lot and keep it wetter. And the wetter that it gets, the more it will hog the actual lather. That's been my experience at least. Now going forward, Again, this is a brush review, but going forward, I'll probably be using synthetic more and more. West Coast Shaving has that awesome Evo brush, which I picked up, great performer. And I think it just bodes well for uh, reviews of different soaps and splashes. I think you really get to see the performance of an actual soap better with the synthetic for review purposes. That's just my personal preference. And they've also got that T3 Trafalgar from Simpson, which I really like. So I think I got a good load in there. But as often as I can, I'm probably gonna use synthetic for these reviews, but when I'm re reviewing a brush with a badger knot, obviously we're gonna go badger. So I've got substantial growth and I've got more growth than I'd like to have for a brush review. And the reason that is, is I just find that when I have growth like this, I have thick hair, it's dark, so it's very visible. But I like to do brush reviews when I only have like a day or two of growth, maybe three at the most. It gets more than that. You start to see the growth through the actual lather. And I just find that I can't build the lather as good as I'd like to when I've got denser growth. So this video might go a few minutes longer than I normally do because I had to load. Now, obviously, one disclaimer I want to throw out there too with these reviews. We're reviewing products. So we're going into details. We're going into explanation as we're shaving. We're stopping a lot. We're calling things out. We're highlighting things. When I'm just doing a regular shave with no camera, with no presentation, with no review, with no content, it might take me 10 minutes to do it. And that's because I'm wet shaving and I'm enjoying it. And that's the length that I like to do it. So it doesn't really reflect how long it would typically take you on a given day if you're shaving with no camera, no audience to go do a shave from start to finish. You'll go a lot faster than that. So I took all the excess soap from the base. This is a very different base with a very different finish. I like it. And the brush whipped it up quite well. That three band badger from West Coast Shaving is quite the performer. And to me, I like it better. And so the other handle it comes in is quite good. I like it better in this handle. I just feel like the loft and the setting works a little better here and it's less floppy on this one. So I dig it. But this knot, it's probably not as dense as a lot of the contemporary knots that you'll find from a lot of artisan brush makers. And they'll source some really nice pillowy fluffy knots. This one's very pillowy, it's very fluffy, it's very comfortable, it's luxurious. Not quite as dense, but I gotta tell you, this one does feel a little bit denser than the one that I have in the other handle. And maybe that's because of the way the loft is set. So again, those metrics, those diameters, the way that all that stuff works, the loft setting oftentimes will change the experience for you. In this case, it is changing the experience for me. If it's the same exact knot, which I looked at it when I bought it, and I looked at the other knot when I bought it, it's the same specs. Now again, this is a shorter handle, so the loft is set lower and not higher. The other one is set higher, it's floppier. This one, it's not. So I'm getting a different result from the same knot. So you'll see guys talk about that in the community and sometimes people are like, hey, you don't have to be so scientific, but it actually does change the game a little bit, it does change your experience. So if you're OCD like me, you like to know all those things. This is actually performing quite good. I like this. 
So again, in the other handle I have it in, the honeycomb, it's a little floppier. This one, it's a little more stout. I like it. But that's just me. If you like your knots flappier, then you'll get a higher loft. Now to me, for a knot that's not as dense, having a lower loft is better because it won't be as floppy and it will appear denser. If it's less dense and a higher loft, it'll appear a lot floppier. So just something I'm noticing as I'm moving along. But as far as comfort and luxury, this stuff is great. And I've been around back when the TGN knots and all that were popular and they're still around, I think. But by far, we're living in really great days as far as wet shaving goes, just because of the products that are available, the engineering that goes into it, um, the advancements they're making in knots and soap bases and splash formulas and all the cool things that we're seeing right now. So anyways, I hope you picked up a lot on that explanation about Neil and his company and what his vision was and what he was trying to do. Um, he's done, the cool thing I like too is, let me add a little more water to this and I think we'll get going from there. The other thing I like that he's done is he's re-trademarked a lot of the old um, names of the lot. So Merit, Clenzo, Double Duck, things like that. He's re-trademarked those, which I think is super cool. So he can use those names, he can recreate the models, and what he can do now too is make them in several different color combinations, which is really cool. So if you look at some of the old Double Ducks or some of the old names that I just rattled, Everettis, Clenzos, things like that, if you look at that, they were made in specific models and only in specific colors. And what Neil's able to do now, if you're seeing all this cool stuff, I mean, you couldn't find this back then in these color combinations with that gold inscription on there, you couldn't do it. You can now with the way Neil's doing it. So that's one of the things he said that he enjoys is that not only is he able to re-trademark and recreate these handles, but he's also able to offer them in several different colors, which I think is super cool. I like that. And especially today, we've got so many wet shavers with so many likes and personalities. And it's cool to be able to fulfill orders in that fashion. To be able to get people what they're looking for. You know, these are relics you're going to probably pass on to your kids or shave till you're 90. Who knows? This base is great. And what I find now too with these newer knots, if I do it right, I don't have to add as much. Look at this stuff. Look at this. Stuff is getting everywhere. If you saw the last few videos I did, I gave shout outs to my friend Ross McBee and his cleanliness. And I have not achieved that. All right. I'm going to go with that. Going with my Edwin Jagger DE89 3D Diamond Handle. And I've got my absolute favorite blade in there. If you want to know what it is, it is the Astra Green. Or as they call it, the Superior Platinum. Everybody has that blade that provides that wow factor for them. That just does it for them. It's smooth. It's sharp. It hits every criteria. It just does it for you. And it's different for everybody. That's the cool part. I don't know. I rather enjoy people's differences. I love it. I love having a discussion with folks. It's, it's nice when people agree with you on certain things, but it's nice to get different perspectives. That's what I love about this channel. You have so many different personalities with so many different perspectives on the same things. brush, or not the brush, but the blade is so smooth. So that's just one model. At the end, I'll rinse it off and re-display the brush so that you can see it. I went with the purple and the black with the gold inscription. Um, you saw some other shavers with the different models um, as early as a few shaves ago. I think there was a review on this same exact brush, I think with the different bottom, but still, I mean, it's whatever your liking is. West Coast Shaving constantly has drops, so hit those notifications on their site. They always will notify you if something's out of stock and it comes in stock. Drops are becoming more frequent, so it's great. Pick one up. I do want to get a double duck. I dig them. 
And again, this is exciting for me because I'm OCD and I don't like to buy old nostalgic brushes just because, like I said, you never know who's had them. But I think this is cool, what Neil has done. Kudos to you, Neil. I think it's clever. I've seen some really great ideas the last couple of years. Now, if you're looking for a razor, if you're relatively new to the hobby, you're looking for a razor that's very efficient and not really aggressive, it's more moderate or mild, this DE89 is a mainstay. It's wonderful. Either that or the 34C. Now, I will say the 34C is one of the more magical and more comfortable razors I've used. I have the G and the C. I keep them around. I use them all the time. Especially if I have low-level growth, it gets the job done. If I have uh, more dense growth or more robust growth like I had today, something like this. To me, this is a more, so how do I put it? The 34C is a little more comfortable of a razor. This one's a more efficient razor for me. Now I sold my original 34, not 34C, but the DE89. because I didn't really care for the handle on it. I bought it back when I had no idea what I was doing. It was the first razor, DE razor I ever purchased. And I ended up selling it on BST. And now somebody else owns it. But that's because I bought it in this handle. So when they came out with this 3D diamond, you can get this on West Coast Shaving site. It looks like little diamonds and it's very grippy. I love it. It looks elegant and it's more efficient and easier to handle. And it's really just mowing this down. This, this Astra Green, I call it, so the community will call it the Astra Green. Some folks will technically call it the Superior Platinum. It is, the technical name is the Superior Platinum. There's Astras in a blue box too, and I think those are the stainless steel. I think, don't quote me. Uh, I just know the greens really well because they've worked so well for me. They're just, and they're inexpensive. You can get a box of them any, anywhere from 12 to 15 bucks. You can get a hundred uh, blades in that box. They'll last you forever. You can get 10 plus shaves out of them if you really wanna stretch it that far, it's up to you. Some folks will scoff at that and say, they're cheap blades, why would I take them that far? If the shave starts to become abrasive or harsh, obviously you wanna to change to a new blade. If it's not, you can keep going. It just depends on your skin type. But this is great, this has been a fantastic shave. Exactly what I needed. So I will say, because I can't remember, I know I've used that other honeycomb brush with the three band West Coast shaving not in it. And I can't remember if I was specifically reviewing it or not, I have to go back and look. But I do like it more in this handle for some reason. And again, it has to be the lock and the settings. It seemed less floppy to me. And it's very comfortable, very pillowy. I enjoy it. And I get that nostalgic look. Now I love the contemporary spin that Neil has put on these. And again, if you've ever looked, you can go online and see, there's like guys like Reyes Restores and other people that do really magnificent work. Um, you can get those restorations and those guys are constantly restoring stuff. And Oftentimes, though, you might find that they'll find a brush that's in atrocious condition. I mean, really bad. And they're not miracle workers, so they'll do their best to restore it. Oftentimes, they do just, like I said, marvelous jobs getting it to look like new. Sometimes it's easier to do than other times. I like the idea that you could take something like this, re-trademark it, reimagine it, and make it available for contemporary use. And it's new. I like that. A lot. But this thing, this not, I mean, I've used this once or twice before, but I think now that I'm just really paying attention to it and honing in on it, it really feels good. Man, this is good. Super pillowy. 
So again, this is the West Coast Shaving 3-band knot in here. It's good. I like it. Now, a while back you saw me doing videos where I was really falling in love with the Pulse Silver and it just went downhill from there. I don't know what happened. So I, I had a handful of shaves in the beginning that were really good. And then it just started, the trajectory went downwards for me. It just, I started having harsh and abrasive, abrasive shaves with it and it just didn't work out for me. Now I had discovered another blade called the Wizomit. Now that's hard to get anywhere. It's pretty good, it's very durable. It's kind of legendary in the community. A lot of folks like it. There are some defectors. Like anything else. But I like it, but still, this is my favorite, the Astro Green. I abandoned it, I remember, for a little bit just to go on this excursion where I was trying different blades, but this, as I came back to him, like, oh my gosh, where you've been all my life. For the price and availability, it's just a marvelous razor, or a blade rather. All right. Maybe it could be, but I don't need my cleanup pass today, so let's see. So I'm filling around. And I don't have a lot of stubble. This has been one efficient shave. So I thought it was kind of cool. Bring up something new. And then I dug out some of the older stuff that's still relevant to me and still really exciting and still really great from a performance perspective that's still on the West Coast Shaving site. You can get. Some of that stuff is good. And you know, I could name off a few names, but there are some folks that have had the same soap base for the last five plus years. They're still really good. They contend with contemporaries today. They really do. What I think is really funny is the last, it was last year, the year before I started making fun of the fact that we're going into all these different fats and putting them into soaps. Now, I wasn't making fun in a serious tone. It was more of a humorous thing to me. They all work. It makes the soap bases work. I'm a big fan of Oleo, for example, that uses the duck fats, one of my favorite bases. Um, and I started making jokes about all the different animals, flamingo fat, things like that. But what's funny is over the past year, we've actually ventured into these different animal fats, different ones coming into soap bases and people naming their soaps as such. So I think it's funny, but it works. And it's given us more stuff that we can use. It's such a great hobby with so much availability. And the main thing is don't take it too seriously. You're just shaving for crying out loud. I love it. I mean, I never had a problem with, I guess you would call it contemporary shaving methods, cartridge, cartridge razors and canned goo. I never got irritation. You can, you can see in one of my old videos, I did a comparison of the two methods. Never had a problem with those methods. It never gave me abrasion or anything else. I just prefer this method. I love it so much that I do it on camera. There we go. All right, speed up the shave. Now again, take all my commentary out and all of my stops and explanations and things like that that I do for review purposes, the shave would go in half or less the time. I don't know what maneuver that is, but I've just found that's the best way for me to get my mustache. My mustache hairs grow out like this. It's really weird and mapping it has been a challenge for me.
Now, normally, I don't think I'm gonna go there today. This is good. Normally, I'll do a cleanup pass where I'll wring the knot out, put it around my face, kind of do a fill around and get all that excess, but it's quite good, so I'm gonna stop there. Today's shave was very efficient. The blade was new, that could have assisted. Who knows? Now, here's the only negative thing that's gonna come of this shave. Clean off here. The only thing I have discovered with this line. Now the soap is excellent, the post shave, the face feel, there's no, for me, no irritation. It works well for me. So hits all the metrics for me. The only issue I've found has been with these babies. So this is a very clever bottle, or as uh, one of my friends calls it, cute. Um, it's a nice bottle, I like it. It's different than what most other soap makers are offering for bomb bottles. But I found on pretty much all of them, there might be one straggler, the pump goes out after a while. Yep, it's not working. I've done everything. I've gone in, I've cleaned them out. I thought maybe there was clogging or dried balm in there or something. It just, after a while, it stops working. So you actually have to pull it apart and dig it out. Now the, the bomb is fantastic. No issues with it. It's just the contraption itself will cease to operate, to function. So I kind of just dip my finger in there because it is great balm transparent and it feels good and it's one of those bombs so what I look for in a bomb and a post shave is like a soothing reaction just a soothing sensation healing relief because shaving is facial abrasion especially with the method that we're choosing to shave with those razor thin razor the blades I mean it's very different than using a cartridge cartridge were, cartridge razors were designed more for comfort and just for ease of use and there is a technique. So this method of shaving is fantastic, but there is a technique to it and you have to learn it. It didn't take me long to learn cartridge shave. It's like shaving for dummies. Not to say that people that do it are dummies. We're saying, I did it for years until I found this method. It's just a lot easier of a method to learn. This method with the type of equipment that we use, it takes a little bit longer to acclimate yourself to it. But once you do, it's marvelous. All right, so let's get this done. I'm gonna wring this out, and I really enjoyed the shave, but I enjoyed the knot a lot. And I really dig these handles. So kudos to Neil and West Coast Shaving for coming to some sort of agreement to offer these in tandem, which I think is great. I love when West Coast Shaving gets the drops. I can go take a look at what they have. and I can pick up something if I want. But here it is. 26 millimeter, three band badger in the Clenzo model. It's got that purple with black top. I love that gold inscription and it's got that heritage collection insignia on the bottom. I think it's great. So anyway, that's the shave, a lot of information. You know, I'm just a 25 to 30 minute guy. I don't know. All right, guys, thank you for joining me. God bless you. I'll be back soon with another shave. Stay safe till next time.